can talk about conversation theory first, trying to get into some more detail of conversation theory. Uh, certainly not all of it, by any means. That's what we can do in, in 45 minutes or so. And then we'll be talking about uh, comparing and contrasting conversation theory to the concepts of artificial intelligence. And at that point, we expect a uh, reasonable free-for-all. And then we want to, if we have time, finish up with a uh, Sure, exactly. The generalizations we want to make about conversation theory to wrap up our series of three workshops. We'll see how we go. All right, Gordon. Chairman Ruth, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this one of the seminars, which is a later one in the series, um, follows other discussions where we've talked about uh, theory, a type of interactionism called conversation theory, applicable either to individuals, to groups or teams, and to, in particular, I suppose, teams and groups and people interacting with or through, better to say through, machines as aids because a machine I regard as a complex, dynamic, and extremely useful tool, a computing machine, but something on a par with a motor vehicle or an aircraft. So one doesn't usually talk to aircraft, and aircraft don't usually talk to you. Uh, but you do, however, talk through them in the sense that you output a lot of the operations you would normally carry out in your head in the flying of the craft. The same applies to any other type of tool, especially if it's a dynamic and complex tool. And a computer is something of just that sort. And I make this comment because uh, we have been titled, I believe, this session, <laughs> uh, Artificial Intelligence, as a general rubric, uh, namely the school of people who uh, are interested to simulate emulate, uh, in some sense, extend, perhaps, the possibility of human thinking and learning by means of machinery, by means of computing machines, and maybe even to make arrangements that work on their own. Now, I therefore rub in the attitude that, so far as I'm concerned, and unless you can show me otherwise, if a computer machine is other than a device which is acting the capacity of something that's told what to do, maybe a very complex thing, maybe more complex than I can do on my own, um, then it would be called a broken machine. It would be a bust machine if it had other properties. I can get it to do theorem proving. I can get it to do all sorts of fancy things like that, pattern recognition, providing it's told how to do it. Now, I also want to liberalize that apparently damning remark, since it seems to imply that artificial intelligence, or as I prefer to call it, intelligence, without a qualifier artificial, uh, is utterly absurd as an aim. I do not think it is. I think it's a very important aim. And in particular, I'm very much concerned with those sorts of AI systems known as expert systems. And with some of the paradigms that have developed recently around and about expert systems. Uh, however, I think a certain amount of caution is needed. In other words, I'm not denying, you see, that the machine cannot be anything except a tool which does what it's told. Uh, excepting for one thing, that is the constraints we made on the thing in any present, current design of computing equipment. Certain algebraic constraints were imposed upon the darn thing by its design. And what do these constraints refer to? They refer essentially to Essentially, I mean, there are inessential constraints, like it has a limited storage, and it has some of its storage on a disk or in a, in a magnetic domain of bubble memory. Uh, 
These are sort of trivial constraints that could be gotten over and can be gotten over. Uh, non trivial ones are really the constraint of truth. Uh, of order of execution of moves or operations. So I just called it order of operations. And these are the main ones. Um, we just have, let's say, process rules which can vary a good deal. And chiefly, the process rules are there to ensure that the thing is uh, they're not so much there as a, as a constraint as to ensure that the thing is capable of interpreting or compiling messages of instructions sent to it in the form programs. So this idea is not in any way a damning constraint. It's a perfectly reasonable constraint and a lot of different architectures observe this. Now having said this, I want to please compare and contrast um, a arrangement uh, and this is generalization what I choose to call a primitive or proto language it's called L sub P um, L sub P has sometimes been called by others, and I tend to agree with them, a proto-logic as well, which uh, is implemented, or there are various implementations of it, going under the generic title of thought sticker. Now, in a conversation, as we talked about it before, There are certain constraints imposed by agreement and understanding the participants in a conversation, which may either be you and I, or a group or a team and a person, or else can be two distinct regions in my brain. I'm not talking about the left and right hemispheres. I'm talking about different beliefs or hypotheses or uh, bodies of knowledge. And they can be talking to each other, usually inside a brain, although if there's a convenient interface, I may, either by use of a protocol and a questioning as an interview, or commentary driving is a very good example. Commentary driving, which the police do when they drive along and say how they are driving at the same moment, or by a machinery, it is perfectly possible to exteriorize these internal thoughts, which amount to a debate between two points of view or more adopted by one same brain. This particular cop is, is doing the commentary driving. Now, the entities which are exchanged in an agreement and in the Greek, it's a loaded word. For those of you, I'm not sure anybody has not been here for the others. I think one of you haven't. Am I correct? Uh-huh. Uh, an agreement is a loaded word. For others, it's going to be just repetitious to say this. I'm sorry. I, I, I cannot avoid making, otherwise it's going to make sense and some, not make any sense at all to some people. An agreement does not mean an accord. It does not mean that we feel or think the same way, it does mean that we may, for example, agree to disagree equally well. So an agreement is not used in the sense of, hi, we think the same way about everything or something. Uh, it is that 
if we do not think the same way, we understand why we don't think the same way, or at least have some inking of it, or agree to disagree. That's perfectly all right. And agreement in this sense may be modeled by coherence. So this word coherence can model agreement in very much the same way of agreement up here in the general sense and it has a model which is a coherence either in principle logical coherence that is to say uh, a thing like Resch's coherence value of truth in which you talk about hypotheses which are different knitting together to some extent so that data may be accepted as candidate evidence uh, or else even in the physical sense of coherence where one talks about the entrainment of say a lot of nonlinear oscillators together and we talk about a coherent region, meaning something rather like coherent as against coherent radiation. But in this case, we have a local condition of locking going on. Uh, they can be modeled by coherence in very much the same way that the actual words true and false, as used in a standard logic, can be modeled uh, by usually the values T, F, or 1, 0. Okay? Uh, notice that 1 and 0, or the letters T and F, do not mean truth. This proposition is true, true that all of us are here today in this room. Proposition about that. Uh, they are simply a model to represent adequately this and manipulable in the same way as a logic. And coherence is a model in exactly that sense of agreement. It isn't agreement per se. of coherence is as agreement would in the real world. That's a strict analogy, a very strict analogy, with uh, the truth values and the actual representation of true and false in a standard logic. Now, these implementations of L sub P represent those aspects in a conversation where the concepts that are shared, and just to recall it, we had the idea of a conversation going on. Certain agreements took place between A and B. A and B could either be in two branches, etc., or not. And when we look at these stable points, we've got an agreement, and we've got a particularly hard psychological datum, a hard-nosed psychological datum, when we could examine the process of sharing the two. So agreements uh, of that kind are called agreements over an understanding. And of course, the shared part is not all of the concepts that the participants in that conversation have. Uh, not usually, at least. It is some part of it. And these are public concepts in the sense of things like tables, chairs, vehicles, craft, missiles, whatever, which are uh, publicly agreed in a given community. Everybody has a bit different idea about them, but all of them can manipulate them and point out at them <coughs> and even maybe make them if they want to. So the public concept is indeed uh, not just a name, it has a name in the language usually, or commonly it has a name or label or designate. It frequently has a class name or designator or something of this kind. And um, it um, 
has also, however, a sort of representative procedure for recognition and for manufacture, probably, which is, uh, or for use, uh, which is characteristic of this thing, but it isn't, it isn't the whole of the lot of procedures in a concept which, say, a knowledgeable person would have about this, this, uh, this missile or this table or whatever, this cup, this period bottle. Um, now, what conversation, oh, sorry, what, um, what LP does is to take the public concepts of conversation theory and form a logic or a language for talking about those public concepts, the things that remain outside here, supposing A and B are talking about some object, say, T, it's con T, and that's A's concept of T, that's B's concept of T, and those concepts have procedures and give rise to on execution to certain entities which are behaviors or internal images, commonly the either behaviors or internal intellectual behaviors. And let us say that the thing shared is T star, which is part of T A, and part of T B, and probably part of T sub a whole lot of other things, together with some kind of procedure like, uh, I'm going to not call it a, a concept, but a model uh, because it's outside of people, but it's still a dynamic thing, model or instructions, class of models. Uh, starred. To generate a T starred, T asterisk, or to recognize a T asterisk, or what have you. And I give those a generic name, topics. The name is odd because in some contexts, that's very misleading. The word topic is extremely good, for example, in the context of education or even a good deal of psychology, where you ask people to attend to or deal with a certain kind of subject matter. On the other hand, it seems a bit daft when you're talking about commanders occasionally, talk about topics which consist in action units or uh, tactics or something of this kind. Well, I'm sorry, there has to be a name for it. It started in the literature as topic because a lot of this word was done in the context work was done in the context of education. But things of this kind are equally equally valid as as uh, <coughs> as being topics. And therefore, I'm going to use the word topics of MA here. So I'll just put in topics at the top, where I put in. Just say public concepts are indeed topics. And this is what, this is if you like, the stuff that L sub P is about. Topics and their relations to one another. Either their relations in a symmetrical fashion or their relations in a direct fashion when they give rise to action. Of some sort, such as for the execution of or and may contain several options according to different strategies. Is something wrong? Oh, I'm sorry, I broke it. I do apologize. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, now, the relations between topics. A length of coherence, that is the sort of truth value up here. Uh, so that, for example, you can talk about myths, hypotheses which have not yet been tested, ideas, conjectures, plans that haven't yet been tried out, as perfectly valid notions 
which have a coherence value with other plans or the body of opinion about planning or about the effect of plan, uh, as well as things that can be evaluated true or false. Of course, this doesn't prevent at all, and I ought to emphasize this like crazy, this doesn't prevent somebody authoring or learning from or talking about L sub P, it's in no way preventing them from um, not talking about topics, obviously, from taking a region of a representation in thought echo or language L sub P, which is equally good, primitive and rendering in that particular corner Mechanical things in another context might be to do with thoughts, uh, things in electrical and uh, hydraulical concept uh, context are in different sorts of universe. It happens that those sorts of universe satisfy very much the same rules when we do set up tests for whether or not they work and agree to those tests, those to uh, use meters and pressure gauges in the case of electricity and hydraulics and uh, test our hypotheses to form theories or workable plans of action. It happens that those two in the general field of concrete entities, both of them refer to, uh, have the same class of rules uh, and hypotheses which may be tested as true or false insofar as they are subject to data from agreed measuring instruments, etc., uh, are concerned. The, these rule types are much the same, whereas we talk about a myth or an opinion or a belief, then indeed there are no truth values to it. Now, uh, it's a different sort of universe. There may be truth values to beliefs, but certainly they're a different universe and certainly they don't follow the same rules of inference as you would do in ordinary mathematics. We'd have to use a different brand of mathematics for this purpose. Now, there may even be cases where we don't want to assign a definite true or false or probable or not probable value, but wish to say, I imagine, I imagine this scenario. And there ain't a truth value to that in the logical sense at all. But simply, your next stress is the truth value to a command, raise your hat, sir. Gentlemen, raise your hats. As a matter of fact, uh, it has no truth value. It isn't because you haven't got hats on. If I'd brought a hat, I'd provide one. Uh, or, gentlemen, under your type. Up these <laughs> but uh, it's, it's not a command. It is one truth. The obedience of it occurs and not a true or false value in the command. You can make a statement command that uh, asked us to take our ties off, uh, and then he immediately rescinded it. It doesn't have a truth value, or has a question of truth value, but it does have a coherence value, which can be modeled. Commands do have coherence values, they don't have truth values. And the same applies to myths, and, uh, and stories, and fables, and beliefs, and customs, and the, the habits of a particular country and so forth, so social airs and graces of, of various people, or whatever. So a remarkable number of very nitty-gritty things like commanding and questioning, even, let alone entreating and imploring and so on, persuading, just don't have truth values, and as attempts to make them do so turn out to be so much nonsense. And First of all, then, the logic is a logic of coherence, of sticking together. So we might take a very simple example, like, say, um, according to you, a uh, factory uh, 
uh, implies or entails. I'll use the word entails because it is the technical term I usually use. Manager. Building. Product. And that might be my notion of factory. Okay, well, could you please give a notion of factory, which doesn't involve those? Anyone? Materials. Materials. Yeah. Anything else? Energy. Energy. I guess you need more. Yeah, that would be enough. A process, okay. I mean, that would be all right. And no, it seems a process. Fine. Now, when you have a, uh, this is one of you, this is one of you, I'll call that B, or from, you know, it was A over here. Uh, the, to share factory, yeah, is to render a coherence between these two outside. So factory exists outside. And outside, if we have shared our concept, there will also exist a bit of each of these. In other words, there will be also, sticking on to that and cohering with that outside, a collection of these things. Materials. Sorry, materials from this guy. Energy process from this guy. And these are the outside bits. There will be... I will draw that this way. It's an LP expression. Yeah. From this guy, we get materials, energy, and process. And those stick together with factory in a topic outside. And uh, no, this guy, uh, I mean, I could have drawn it either way around. These are both outside the boundary of the person. Have I? I'm sorry, you're quite right. This is manager, yes. I do apologize. It's manager, and I do apologize. I'm sorry. Thank you very much indeed. Manager, thank you very much. Manager, what was that? Building and product. Thank you extremely. Thank you. And, um, that would be, incidentally, uh, one of two very primitive sorts of coherence represented in this kind of implementation. And what we're doing is, in fact, to represent things in this way. The notation is pretty arbitrarily, arbitrary. I mean, I could have called this T, P, Q, R, or something of this kind. Uh, this thing, T, this is T A D B, of course. This is T A uh, uh, R R S L M. We want a better title, uh, and commonly one does use uppercase letters as shorthand designators when writing expressions, and it will, in fact, help a good deal if I don't have to write the expressions and anyhow get them all wrong. But I would like to illustrate the, the simplest sort of expression using some, some letters. And they could very well, it could very well be that expression of an agreement between a couple of notions of factory. Uh, and it would look like T, which is the common factory. And uh, P, Q, R, and S, K, or whatever it was. Um, that expression there, which is one notion of factory, is surrounded by a boundary because those topics, those public concepts, stick together, cohere, are glued together without losing their distinction. In other words, just because it happens that an entity called a factory is made up of an entity called a PQ and R, that is a manager, a 
uh, a material in a building, and a product in a building, uh, the, uh, it doesn't mean to say that the product in the building and the manager become destroyed as a result of it. The coherence does not remove their distinction. In fact, in a strict sense, these letters stand for the minimal things that are enclosable by lines of coherence, because they themselves are lots and lots of things sticking together. Now, you can also have another sort of expression, which is this kind, uh, which shows that I've got a crossing of two coherence boundaries. Again, it is absolutely imperative that the sticking together does not lose the distinction needed to make the parts still unities, still identifiable parts. There is indeed a unity consisting in either the original form I drew with but one circle, T, P, Q, R, which is called collective. And there is also a coherence of the type indicated when I draw both circles or both lines called distributive. Sorry? It's another you went too far beyond that aside that you made it. Could you say something more about that P, Q, and R are in some sense, I think you said, the minimal entities that are imposable in some sense. So if you broke those down further, then you could not just talk about Oh, yes, you can. And I'd like to go the other way around. I said, in a certain sense, not just to be pedantic about it, I said in a certain sense because I wanted to approach that from a slightly different point of view. And in fact, to ease your mind about it uh, for the moment, if there is a thing like factory or material or manager, I can, in principle, I can always attach to it a process which, when carried out, recognizes or acts as or uh, even makes a manager. I train the manager. And that is the criteria of the canon. There has to be a process there. It is not just in any sense a static representation. It in no way resembles a, uh, a um, what do you call the wretched things, um, semantic net. It's not at all like a semantic net although superficially, obviously, there's a certain resemblance to a lot of semantic nets. Uh, and the difference, of course, is that in semantic nets, you can uh, draw upon a whole lot of uh, somewhat static formalization, and indeed you have to use very large ones, and uh, that is not the case here. We are talking about something which has a logic of its own rather than a logic attached to the machinery and brought in to account for bits of epistemology. Is the concept of coherence similar to contiguity? Mm -hmm. Very similar to contiguity. It's formally like Rasha's thing, but it's very, very simple to contiguity. Very simple, very similar indeed. Uh, um, I, I used it actually myself because it was converse of dissonance. But uh, that is beside the point, because uh, whilst I was using it, Rasha was presenting this logical specification of coherence, which can be extended to coherence of procedures as against coherence of propositions, i.e. The, that is the procedures that make up the propositions, and uh, that you can add to this a logic of distinctions. And LP is, in fact, just that thing. It's, it's a logic of uh, distinction, coherence, distinction, and process. And the process actually comes in in saying, well, at least when you get to those letters that are written down, it must be possible to invoke a process, if those are the only letters which are in a, a circle, in a, in a bound. You know? Um, so... That doesn't mean, however, that they have a truth value. In the ordinary way, you can arrange that they have a truth value, of course. That is always possible. 
I'll show some more realistic examples on view graph later, but I find that view graphs usually make such a noise that, uh, again, how long do I have, please? Uh, another half hour, good. Fine. Mm -hmm. Four part? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you can extend this uh, type of um, arrangement quite a long way. For example, you can have expressions, uh, and the letters are still standing for perfectly ordinary things, uh, whether they be family relations or industrial relations as in a factory, or whether they be uh, relations to do with plans, tactics, and so on. Uh, and we can have L, M, U, V, let's say. And we can even have looping back things. Uh, uh, G. Okay. So, I have drawn here quite a complicated form of system. Uh, now, can you have everything? Is every expression like that possible? I mean, are there any anything denied that you have to throw out? That would have to be, well, not thrown out. That would have to be dealt with in some. Um, Who can damage it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I sh shall yes. yeah. Why don't I put it under here? It might be easier if I put this under under here. Okay. Uh, these are typical expressions involving distinction and coherence between processes, and in particular between the processes that are attached to, realize, or apply a public concept or topic. Is this the G, this one you've drawn here called G, mm -hmm. I don't know if you meant that to be something specific. Would that be how you might uh, represent sort of an ambiguity or... or a it's word that has two completely entire mean different. Oh yes, like say plant, you know, it might mean sure. But so does factory. All the things on factory, but yeah. also means all these growing things the, too. So yeah, well, uh, sure. But let's let's just have a look at this one. Let's go over one page and draw out a simple one, a uh, very simple one at the top, which is T P Q R P T P Q R S K. Okay. Now, let's verbally state what it means. So, T, P, Q, R. Stated verbally means T is entailed by P, Q, R, P is entailed by T, Q, R, R is entailed by T, P, Q. And maybe from that derived, without P, Q, R, or whatever, losing their identity as topics. Fair enough? Uh, draw up this distributive form, um, S, uh, K, wasn't it? It means that T, S, K entail each other, that is, T entails S, S, in, uh, S and K, sorry, S entails T and K, and K entails T and S. Okay, but since I've got two overlapping ones in this case, uh, it is also the case that T, but not S and K, entail P, Q, and R. Okay, no? and vice versa, that T can be retrieved equally well from P, Q, and R, or from S and K. Now that is a simple distributive form. The form which is a bit more complex is, has a cyclicity in it, which is why I drew it as a valid exemplar of the representation is that here we have a 
redundancy other than a cyclicity, uh, other than a uh, other than a distributive form. Okay. Uh, one might ask, well, what would be disallowed in such a thing? And I give an example of the simplest entity which would be disallowed for the very reason that the asserted coherence uh, which models agreement, the asserted coherence, uh, contradicts the distinction which is all also asserted by the statement. Okay? And the simplest one of these, uh, at least the easiest to draw, would be something like um, T Q P R, where I draw a circle around there. Now I'm going to put a cross against this. Uh, the cross doesn't. What does the cross mean? This is a bit of a matter of research philosophy and a bit of a matter of developmental philosophy, as well. You could say, well, you just ain't allowed to write that. You know, the author can't. You can't say that. Supposing the author says that's what I really mean. Why can't I say it? Well, you can, but I mean, you might as one stratagem. So far, I see no reason to object to that at all. I mean, it no. looks no different than anything other than Oh, sure. Uh, I ain't going to go into that. But I would mark it with a cross, but I wouldn't prevent you saying it. I would present you with some alternatives. I'd say, look, um, look, my friend, perhaps you uh, don't really mean that at all. Perhaps you really mean, uh, and a machine, thought sticker, would present you with these possibilities, of course. Perhaps you really mean uh, that the whole thing is just in one collective form, like, for example, do you mean would that satisfying? Or would you like to have perhaps something much more elaborate where you added more distinction to the thing? And do I'd offer you these possibilities of taking a lot more distinction into the bundle. I mean you could have things like sort of T E, S, Q, R, perhaps, I don't know. But, uh, it would present you with these alternatives, which would give you enough distinction. The trouble with this one being, as will be indicated to you, that if we write this in a sort of bracketed notation, or lisp-like notation, um, we obtain expressions which are perfectly all right, T, is obtainable from Q and R. It's also obtainable from P and Q. Um, close bracket. Q is obtainable from uh, T and P. And it's also obtainable from R and T. Really? Okay. However, it is asserted that um, P is not the same as R. And we well, want to write the expression P is obtainable from entailed by. Uh, T is obtainable, P is obtainable from T and Q, and R is obtainable from T and Q. And one could equivalently, of course, draw those bracket things as trees. And they're called prunings, or first level prunings, in the calculus of L sub P or a calculus of thought sticker and are, of course, automatically displayed. What's happened here is that uh, T and R have the same derivation. Sorry, P and, uh, P and R, P and R, sorry, have the same derivation. I'm sorry? But those are maintained as separate things. You wouldn't have to yeah, but you asserted, you see, when you as an author made the assertion, you said, I'm talking about things that are distinct, yet stick together. And that's the simplest example of talking about something which you assert on the one hand to be distinct and to 
On the other hand, to stick together as another distinct thing. In which uh, you have denied your own assertions. You haven't denied the logic of the engine, you've denied your own assertions. And just depends on the kind of structure.